So after generating over $20 million in sales for our clients, today I want to break down the Facebook ads that allowed that to happen. And actually, what I want to do is break down the five key elements that all of our best performing ads have. Across all of our accounts over the last couple of years, the best performing ads we've seen have had at least all or at least some of the elements that I'm going to show you in this video. So I'll break down the five elements, give some examples as well, just to give you a bit more context, make it a bit more practical. And uh, yeah, we can just get to it. Just a bit more context. I run a Facebook advertising agency. We work with different online coaches and influencers. Majority of it is selling info products. We have a client here that we do different launches for throughout the year. So we spent with this client about 400 grand. This client, we've spent over half a mil. But we also work with some like smaller businesses as well. So you can see here last month, which was July, uh, we spent just 26K for this client. But whenever we're working with a client, the ads that we start with always are basically following the, the outline that I am going to show you today. And I'll actually show you as well how you can take the five key elements and also create different high converting ads using different parts of the, yeah, the, the, the different elements. But anyway, let's get to it. So regardless of when we're creating an ad for a client, so obviously for some of our ads, they could last one minute and then other ads could potentially even last up to like five minutes. You know, we have had some YouTube ads in the past that have been a bit longer than this, but typically I wouldn't, uh, we don't create ads, especially in the beginning anyway, we wouldn't create ads that long. We would rather create smaller ones in the beginning, test the angle, and then we can create like longer variations if we want to. But essentially, regardless of the ad length, they can still follow this template that I'm going to show you because you can basically break up the, the ad video into you know, five different pieces. One, two, three, four, five. I didn't do that very evenly. <laughs> okay, so this isn't supposed to be an accurate drawing of the length, but you get the point. You'd have part one here, two here, three here, four here, and five here. Now it's important to note as well, like I'm gonna use examples of like what I would say in like a video ad in this video, but you could, we also like trans translate this to ad copy as well. So on Facebook, we'll test static images and the ad copy will still follow the, these five elements, right? It's not like it's just a video element. It's about marketing, psychology, sales, and that can be channeled into video ads, ad copy, emails, even just like a regular organic YouTube video, it can translate well into. So it's not so much as like, oh, this is a secret video hack for Facebook ads. It's more so understanding like these elements and why they work so well. And once you understand that, you can use it to create different high converting ads. Um, but regardless of that, you know, we can split the ad into five different parts. And based on how long we want the ad, you know, we could make section four, instead of making it one minute long, we could make it 20 seconds long. Or maybe we actually don't want to use, you know, the third element in this particular ad. So here you can see that you can chop and change and use different elements, all of the elements, some of the elements to make different lengths of ads, depending on kind of like what you, you want to create. So just wanted to give you some more context. So let's get into it then. I'm going to try and draw um, a better drawing here. So the first one is going to be called the hook shock. And some of you watching this will be like, now, well, Sam, that's fucking obvious. Of course, you're going to have a hook at the start of the ad. And it's true. Like people teach this stuff for a reason because you always need to make sure that the start of you, your ad begins with some form of hook. Okay. So these are the different hooks that we like to use in our ads. So we've got a concept hook. We've also got a call out hook. And then we've also got a language hook. Okay, and there's loads of different variations of hooks that you can use, right? I'm not saying these are the only ones, but these are ones that we typically like to use. So this is section one, right? So 
a concept hook is basically talking about some form of, I, I call it a counterintuitive concept. So you're basically making a statement that is going to make your ideal customer stop and think and be like, wait, is that right? Is that true? Did he mean to say that? Does that make sense? I'm interested to learn more. And typically, it'll use language, and it'll be about a concept that is very specific to your audience. So it's not about some wide concept that every single person in the world would like. It's not about like clickbaiting, like news headlines and stuff like that. It's about talking about a very specific concept that only really your ideal customer would be interesting in stopping and learning more about. An example of this that we've used in the past for one of our clients, and a lot of our clients are in the personal development, spiritual development, law of attraction space. And we know that one of the biggest pain points of our customers is that they want to learn how to manifest their dreams and goals. But the problem is, is that they walk around and in their mind, they're like, manifestation doesn't work. I don't know how to manifest. I'm not manifesting. I'm trying to manifest, but it's not working, right? So in their mind, they're like, these different manifestation techniques don't work and I'm not manifesting. So we started one of our ads with, we are always manifesting and always have been. Now, to maybe you and me, that's like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, that's not going to make me stop the scroll. But for our ideal customer who is going around complaining that they can't manifest, if they see in their feed or if they hear someone say, we are always manifesting and always have been, in my mind, I'm going to be like, what? Like, if I'm the ideal customer, I'm going to stop and be like, well, no, like I can't manifest. I'm not manifesting. I keep failing. What do you, what do you mean we're always manifesting, right? So that is a concept that is going to resonate or at least stop the scroll of our ideal customer and no one else. No one else is going to be interested in that, right? And then we go into the ad and, you know, we, we can talk about like the next stages. But that's just like one example, right? So that's like a concept. Obviously, it's going to be very specific to you and your customer and your audience, which, you know, is what makes great advertising and marketing is creating campaigns at us for a specific audience only. So that's the concept. Call out is more popular, I would say, across the industry. Some of the stuff I don't like very much. Um, so a call out, for example, most people do it, right? If you are an agency owner making less than 10K per month, if you are a e-commerce brand owner stuck at 50K a month, right? You basically call out your ideal customer and you can also like tag along some form of pain point. Or you could do a desire, right? If you're if you're an e-commerce business owner looking to scale to a million dollars per month, right? So you could do like a, a desire as well. Not my favorite because most people do this. And I think that it starts the ad off in the wrong way because people instantly just have their guard up because they're like, this sounds like a sales pitch. This sounds like an ad. And for me, I like to create ads that don't sound like ads. And when you start the ad with a call out, it typically sounds like an ad and people's resistance can go up. Um, so you really, if you're going to start an ad like that, and we can talk about this later on as well in the, the, the rest of the ad, but if you start an ad like that, you better have like a lot of like undeniable credibility or social proof that can break through the resistance. If you're starting out and you don't have social proof and then you start an ad off in a really salesy way like that, and you don't have any proof or credibility to break through that resistance that that type of call out creates, then you're going to struggle to get conversions, okay? But that is potentially a, a hook that you can use. I like to do a different version of a call out, which is a little bit less direct. So instead of like asking a question of, are you an agency owner, blah, 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 I would start my ad off like most agency owners um, are stuck between three to five clients. Maybe that's not like the best pain point to touch on. But instead of saying, are you an agency owner? I will make more of a statement that includes the avatar. Most e-commerce business owners, most agency owners, most online coaches, most chiropractors. And that's a way of calling out your ideal avatar in the first couple of seconds, but without directly calling them out which makes the ad seems less salesy, which is going to create less resistance, which increases the chances of them actually watching the ad and consuming it, 
because you're kind of like reporting on something slash talking about something versus calling them out in an ad. So that's a more subtle way that we like to include call outs. And then finally, we like to create hooks that have the, the ideal language of our avatar. Now, the ideal language, the, the language of our ideal avatar. Now, you should always, in all of the different hooks, you should use the language, um, but we always try and come up with different variations that really focus on very niche, specific language. So again, for some of our clients, for example, uh, in the spiritual niche, you know, using words like alignment, abundance, even stuff like meditation, that sort of stuff is very niche specific. And those types of words aren't really used by the general public much. So if we start an ad off and we say a couple of those buzzwords, I suppose, in the first, couple, in the first few seconds of the ad, then we're much more likely to get their attention, right? Another example of this would be would be for if you were a if you were a company teaching salespeople how to get better at sales, maybe you would start your line off with the phrase, I need to think about it. Now some of you might be thinking, well, why is that a good hook? And the reason why is because salespeople, one of the biggest objections that they get on the phone is I need to think about it. So every single day, they're hearing that phrase on the phone. So therefore, that is very niche specific to them. And if they hear, some, if they hear that phrase, they're going to have like mental trauma or triggers in the mind because, you know, every time they hear that phrase, they probably hate it on the phone, right? So we can use stuff that they say or they hear on a daily basis that is very specific to them and their pain point, right? Because again, if we're teaching salespeople how to get better at sales, then obviously the biggest pain point is not closing sales. And one of those pain points is hearing objections. And the main objection is going to be, I need to think about it. So it's kind of like <laughs> deeply layered into kind of like the pain point, but also like language that they would, that they would also use as well. So they're just like some different ideas of the hook that we would use in our ads. Okay, so that's section one. You know what? Let's get creative and let's use some different colors. So the second part that we start most of our ads off with is number two, which is the story. So here we tell either, for, for me, for example, who would write for a client, I would tell my client story. So you can tell the story of your client. You can tell the story of you if you are the brand slash the personal brand slash if you are the client. Or you could actually tell a hypothetical story as well. Now, some people are like, oh, you can't lie. But if you just tell like a hypothetical story about your avatar, it's not lying. People have been doing this on TV adverts for years where they'll have like actors play out a scene, right? And they're not talking about anyone specific. They just know the customer's pain points and they're reacting that in an advert. So as long as you're not saying like, I had this client and then this client able achieved X, Y, and Z and talked about all these amazing specific results and you're just lying about testimonials, that's a totally different thing. But you can talk through a hypothetical scenario that connects with your customer on a deep level, even if it's not, you know, about someone specific, right? So the story should basically be, you want to talk about where they were at the start. I mean, this is like a typical like hero story. So you want to talk about basically the pain to pleasure story. So where they were before your product or your service or whatever you're selling, and they basically were in this dire scenario and they had all of these things that they hated and they, they wanted to get rid of, right? Then they come across the solution. Then typically what we'll add in here is, because at this point you're going into like a bit of a sales pitch, right? Like you're connecting to the pain point, which is good. Then you're talking about this solution that you came across. And at this point in the ad, so let's just say it's like halfway through this story section, 
when you start introing the solution, they're going to come across, they're going to be a little bit skeptical now because they're going to be like, okay, this guy's trying to sell me a product. So what we also like to do is talk about the skepticism that we had or our client had or this hypothetical person had when they first got introduced to the solution. And we can list off all the things they were skeptical about. And again, that kind of like reconnects with our customer on what they're currently feeling, which again, makes them feel heard, understood, is going to resonate with them. And then they're more likely to lower the resistance barrier to the sale because we've kind of like done that reconnection piece. And then from there, after that, we talk about they tried the solution, even though they were skeptical. And these are all the amazing things that they were able to experience um, after getting your product or service. Okay. So kind of like a few key points, what you need to mention in the story, but again, it's kind of like typical uh, zero to, to hero kind of like story. So that's the next part. The third piece is going to be, gosh, my writing is so bad. The third piece is education. And what we want to do is talk about some common, I'm not going to write this all out, a common misunderstanding or a common mistake. So MIS stands for misunderstanding or mistake. And we want to spend this time educating them on that so they can actually see the mistakes themselves. Because what you don't want to do is to be like, um, this, like, if you're going to like call out your competitors and be like, this is wrong, that is wrong. But without actually explaining why, or giving any proof or explaining or giving them actually like some practical information on why what they've tried previously is wrong or why what their competitors offer is wrong, then it doesn't have any weight. You can't just say, hey, stop making this mistake and not actually explain why it's a mistake. So an example of this would be if we were, if we were selling weight loss, for example, um, and if our ideal customer is someone who has like tried all the different diets and maybe like we know that a majority of our customers have tried to lose weight by doing, you know, keto or, or no carbs, right? We would spend the third part of this ad educating them on why keto isn't the best way to lose weight and why in fact it can actually, you know, stagnate your <laughs> metabolic process or it could like stagnate your weight loss or even in the worst case scenario make you put more on weight right and whether that's true or not whether you're a fan of keto or not i'm just kind of present like the marketing angle that i would follow um in terms of like how i would present it if i was selling like a non-keto weight loss product so you basically want to find like the common stuff that your ideal customer is doing on a day-to-day -day basis to try and solve their problem and basically poke holes through the argument and explain to them like, hey, this is the reason why you're not experiencing the results that you want. So again, I'll just give you a more practical example of what, what we've done. So again, a lot of my clients are in like the spiritual space. And I know a lot of our clients, they spend hours searching on YouTube, all of these different manifestation techniques, right? There's lots of different like meditation techniques, scripting techniques, all these weird and wonderful methods. And I know a big frustration of our ideal customer for our clients is that they feel like they're doing everything right. They're following all of the advice. They're following all the different manifestation techniques that they learn about on YouTube, but things still aren't manifesting, right? Now, the common mistake or misunderstanding of them is that they think that just doing the manifestation technique once a day for 50 minutes is the key to manifesting. That's the misunderstanding or the mistake that they're doing. When in reality, it's not whether one manifestation technique is better than the other. It's about the person doing the technique and whether they have subconscious beliefs, programming, or blocks 
that are stopping the result working for them. And actually, if they actually just spent time to remove the blocks that were stopping the manifestation techniques from working, then they would actually have multiple manifestation techniques work for them, which is why you may feel like you're doing, you can see I've, I've written an ad like this a million times because I can just like completely just go for it and just say it word for word pretty much, which is why you can look around on YouTube and Instagram and social media and see all of these people having success with the same manifestation technique that you're failing with. It's not about the technique, it's about the person doing the technique, right? And that's way now we can frame it as the misunderstanding isn't about the technique, but you need to learn how to remove the blocks. And obviously in that scenario, I would sell a solution around removing subconscious beliefs and blocks. So what you want to do here is you want to basically had like a, a new solution based on the, the misunderstanding. Okay. So, and you can also explain why this new solution works. You know, again, it has to be related to the common mistake that they're using, right? So that's just like a practical example from, for one of our clients. Now, the fourth point or the fourth part of the ad is, you know, what? I'm going to do an easier word. I'm going to call it proof. So basically just testimonials, right? So it can be quick fire. <laughs> God, that does not look like quick fire. Or it could be like one, right? So depending on how many testimonials you have and the information you have for those testimonials, we like to do two different versions. So for example, like if we just talked about our new solution and being like, hey, if you do X, you're going to experience Y, right? Y being the really good result. X being the new solution. And then we would just easily transition into the fourth part where we would say, and this is exactly what Sam did, who was able to achieve X, Y, and Z. And John and Charles and Sandra and Siobhan and Jade and Joe, right? And we basically just like list off all of like the names and we'd have it like, if it's like a video ad, we would then like have the like testimonials kind of like pop up, whether it be like an image of them or like a screenshot of them, like putting in the result. And you don't really like spend too much time on each testimonial. It's just quick fire of, and this is what Sam did, X did, Y is it, you know, ABC, boom, 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 boom. And like the testimonials like pop up on the screen. Now, if you don't have like a ton of testimonials that you can quick fire through, then you would just pick one and just go like a, a little bit more in depth around that and probably follow like, you don't have to go into too much detail, but similar to the story element where you would maybe talk about what they were experiencing before and now what they're experiencing after. Because what we want to do here basically is just basically, so we've now, you know, we've connected. So I'll just recap. We've hooked them in. We've told them a story that, connects to their pain points and we kind of paint a brighter future to be like you know this new solution works then we explain to them and educate them on why it works and then we show proof that it works so we're basically just going through the ad and we're knocking down all the objections that they initially had at this point in the ad right because like i said up until this point, we hooked them in. As we start to tell the story and we paint like the bright future and the result that they can achieve with this solution, that's when they realize that we're selling to them. And that's where the objections come in. So at that point, it's kind of like, does it really work? Why does it really work? Why is it better than the alternatives? Why should I trust you? Is there any proof that it works? All of these questions are coming in your project projects prospects mind and that's what the rest of the ad is is to basically overcome those objections and then the fifth part oh, let me use my pen the fifth part is uh, pretty simple it's going to be the the cta right so this is pretty basic i'm not going to spend too much time on that you know you can just basically say hey 
click the link, right? Or whatever the next step is, right? Um, if you've just given them a load of social proof, then you'd be like, if you want to learn how all of these people were able to achieve X, Y, and Z, then just click the link below and learn how, right? So that's kind of like a high level, not very specific CTA, where it's more curiosity-based. They don't actually know what's on the other side. You could do more of like a walkthrough CTA. This takes a little longer, but it's going to make your prospect feel safer to take the next step. So for example, like when someone gets to the end of an ad like this, and if they are interested, obviously at this point, again, they've still got skepticism and they're still unsure. So they might be like, oh, I don't want to click the link. What's on the other side? Are they going to sell to me? Like that uncertainty of what's on the other side of the link can stop people from clicking. So what we do is a walkthrough CTA where we basically just make them feel safe and walk them through the next steps. So for example, it could be, so if you want to learn how all these people achieve X, Y, and Z, then just click the link below. It's going to take you to a page where you can access a case study showing you exactly how these people have achieved it. All you need to do is opt in with your name and best email address. Once you do that, we will send the case study to the email that you entered. So just make sure that it is your best email that you can access. And then you can watch the case study. And if for whatever reason you don't like the case study or you don't want to like the information or you don't want to hear from us again, then you can just unsubscribe from that very first email. All right, so we basically walk them through the whole scenario. So now they know, okay, like I'm going to click the link. I'm going to go to a landing page. I'm going to, they're going to ask for my name and email address. And they, they know everything. So what we found is it might get less clicks, but the conversions that basically opt in are stronger because they know that they're going to click and they're going to be asked for the name and email address. Where the first CTA, which is just like, click the link to learn how, you're not preparing them for what's to come. So a lot of people might click thinking, oh, I'm just going to get instant access to the information. And then when it asks for the name and email address, they're going to be like, oh, for fuck's sake, like, I don't want to do that. Whereas if in the ad, you prepare the person for the next step, it actually makes the conversions higher. I mean, specifically for opt-ins where it's still free. Obviously, you know, if you had like a 5K program just saying in the ad, oh, and it's going to ask you to pay 5K, that's obviously not going to increase your conversions that much. But at the same token, what we do in a lot of our ads is that we will like, if it's like for a low ticket digital product, that's maybe like $27, $17, we will say that we'll test it, but we'll say the price in a lot of the ads. Because again, what we found is yes, you will get less clicks. But the conversions on the sales page are higher because people, because again, if I say in a video ad, just click the link to learn how, and then they click the link and they see it's a paid product, that will create some resistance. It also maybe create a bit of distrust because they're like, oh, they didn't tell me it was a paid program. Whereas in the ad at the end, if you just do a little CTA to be like, hey, you want to learn how, then just click the link and you can access my agency <laughs> cold email script. It's only $17 and it's the same email script that helped me sign, you know, 1.5 million worth of agency clients in the last couple of years. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> bullshitting here. Just like making up like an example, but you can see in that scenario, okay, some people might be put off by the price, so they're not going to click, but the people that do click aren't going to be faced with that like price resistance because they know the price, right? So therefore the conversion should be higher. Again, that's something I would always test. But again, it's just an example of, of basically what you can do. And also as well, we do like a benefit CTA, which is kind of like an add-on from the link. So you could be like, click the link to learn how. Obviously, it's kind of not that strong. But you could do a benefit CTA, which is, you know, click the link to learn how to build a seven-figure agency. Click the link to learn how to, you know, manifest with scripting. Click the link to learn how to lose 10 pounds in 10 weeks or whatever kind of like the main benefit that your ideal customer customer wants. So they're the different five elements. Like I said, when we basically start a campaign in the beginning, again, it depends on, I don't want to like give like a blanket statement and be like every single client we work with, we write this exact ad with all of these five different elements because, you know, blanket statements and absolutes are just bullshit like everything we do especially in like a client business where you're doing done for you services 
everything is custom, right? So I can't sit here and say every single client that we work with uses this structure perfectly. But these are the five elements that we try and include most of or not all of. And some of our best performing ones have obviously um, included them all. But for example, let's go down here. You could have an ad that... Let's just go back here. You could have an ad. Obviously, like realistically, you're always going to want to have a hook. So we can have an ad that goes to one. But maybe like we don't really have like a compelling story. So what we want to do actually straight out the gate is talk about some social proof. And then from there, you might educate them on what all of that, what those people did to achieve such amazing results. And then you might want to do a CTA, right? So there we've used one, four, three, five. So we just missed out number two. So these elements are important, but the order isn't necessarily the most important, right? So obviously, if you're going to use a hook, you're going to use one at the beginning, but you could very easily start with a hook. Then maybe you do a story, about yourself and how you were able to achieve these amazing results. And then from there, you might be like, well, it's not only me because I've actually taught this to 176 people over the last couple of months. And these are results of experience, right? And then you could just do like a quick fire blast off of all the, the testimonials. And then maybe you tell the story, uh, sorry, the education piece where it's like, and the reason why these eight people were able to get these results is because they stopped doing this because this doesn't work because of X, Y, and Z. And they actually started doing this and this works well because of ABC, right? You educate them on the solution and then you would do the CTA, right? But you could also have like multiple CTAs. You could do a hook, you could do the story, you could do the education piece, then you could have a CTA, then you could do more testimonials because at this point, if people haven't clicked, they're probably just still a little bit skeptical, so some testimonials could push them over the line and then you could do, do a final CTA at the end. So you could actually make this longer. And again, like I said in the beginning, you know, it's impossible for me to tell you here like, oh, you know, this, the story should take 45 seconds. Obviously, it's not, it doesn't work like that, right? Obviously, the hook is going to last a couple of seconds. The CTA, depending on which version of the CTA you want to do, should really take, you know, a few seconds, five seconds. You know, if you're going to do the walkthrough, maybe it takes five to 10 seconds. So obviously those one and five are small parts of the ad. Obviously the beefier parts are two, three, and four. And you can see here that now, once you have like these elements nailed for your offer or your client or the campaign that you're running, you can create pretty much endless different variants because not only can you mix the order up like this, but you can also use different versions of it. So maybe when you're writing a campaign for a client, you write a concept hook, a call out hook, and a language hook. There's three variants, right? So you actually have, with this ad, for example, you could have versions a, B, C, right? Because this is hook one, this is hook two, this is hook three. The rest of the ad stays exactly the same, but the hook changes, right? Now, this is obviously going a bit more detailed into split testing, but this is how this kind of like one ad has resulted in so much sales for our clients because it actually isn't just one ad, right? This one ad, like with one Facebook ID, Facebook ad ID, didn't generate $20 million alone. It's these five core elements that make up the ad and how then we've used them to create different variations to help us scale and to help us optimize the ad performance. And, and like I said, it doesn't have to be five minutes. There's no like secret, oh, how long, like don't ask questions like, oh, how long should my Facebook ad video be, right? Because there's no fucking right answer for that. And if anyone tells you, oh, it needs to be 47 seconds is bullshit. It doesn't work like that. But you can see if you, you can create shorter vari variations where, you know, the testimonials is shorter, the education piece is so shorter, the story is shorter, and you can take different elements out to make the ad shorter as well. And that way you can create literally hundreds of different variants 
of similar slash the same type of angle. So if you've got an angle that's working really well, you've got a story that's working really well, then you can really you know create hundreds of variants of that ad essentially. And that's what's going to allow you to you know scale, spend more money, make yourself more money or make your clients more money. So that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.